from Krimo Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. A massive new manufacturing plant is being built in Rosslyn in Schwane to service the local car manufacturing industry in the area. Darren Parker tells us more. The construction of automotive components and trims manufacturer YFPO's new 25,000 meter squared manufacturing facility in Rosslyn is in full swing. YFPO is a joint venture company between French automotive company Plastic Omnium and Chinese automotive company Yan Feng. Although YFPO currently operates 27 plants and employs more than 4,700 people, the new Rosslyn facility is the JV company's first investment outside of mainland China and will be supplying car manufacturer BMW's new plant in Rosslyn. So YFPO do all the exterior work on the new BMW model that will be launched in uh, 2024. So everything that besides the chassis that you see on the outside of a, of a BMW will be manufactured by YFPO, which is why the quality controls are so important, why their robotics and paintwork is so important, because they need to match their quality and paintwork with the main plant's quality and paintwork. YFPO have got a 20-year association and history with BMW across the world, but this will be the first plant that they're building outside of China and obviously the first plant that they're investing in Africa. The start of construction on the plant was celebrated by property developer Eris Property Group and Rosslyn Hub Development Company at an on-site sod turning ceremony on July 25th, which saw various public and private sector stakeholders in attendance. Well, it's a significant event because uh, Tuani Automotive City um, has been in the planning phase for the past 10 years. Uh, the master plan has been finalised and the master plan has also been adopted by the City of Tuani for the Spatial Development Framework. So the areas have been now been allocated and it's a 50 billion rand project which will be developed over the next 25 years which envisages a city CBD centre around Roslyn supported by at the spine and heart uh, the automotive industry. In Twine we've got Ford out in Silverton and in Roslyn we've got Nissan and BMW, we've also got Tata, UD Trucks and Avico uh, and all those automotive manufacturers will be supported by the automotive city around it. But Roslyn Hub itself is a mixed-use development and this is the catalytic project for that. So we'll be bringing a shopping centre, a filling station, a hospital, industrial buildings, residential buildings for people to actually be able to live close to where they work instead of having long commutes to work. And all that will be triggered by this uh, exciting building that YFPO are going to be occupying and that Eris are going to be developing. The project's timelines are extremely tight. With completion of the plant, which is about the size of four football fields expected in less than a year. The timelines are very tight because everything works on BMW's timelines and when they start their main production uh, facility all their suppliers need to be ready and that means that their key suppliers like YFPA need to be ready at least six to eight months prior to the start of the manufacturing process so that all the quality controls can be tested in the actual plant. So the plant has got to start making product by May next year, so that by January the following year when the new BMW model is launched, everything is perfectly checked and the quality controls have been done. And that means we're having to run a lot of processes in parallel. Um, so we're doing, as you can see, the earthworks in the back at the moment. Before the earthworks is finished, once we get beneficial occupation from them, the main contractor will come to site. They'll start with their precast panel erections, which are the panels which we put up to speed the construction process. That'll actually start while foundations are being cast. And all along the way, we've used clever, um, intuitive, in, um, ingenious ways of making sure that we make that program. In fact, the program is even more difficult than May because by November, the, the first uh, area for the robotics has to be available. So we need a con concrete floor, we need walls and we need a roof by, ma by November. So that's the first date which we give beneficial occupation to um, and then after that the final occupation date will be in May. Timelines relate to more than just the work that goes up there. There's local authority approvals that needs to be addressed. Um, for that we need the help of, of the city. And they've been very helpful. There's various steering committees that have been established and We've, we've carefully planned exactly what needs to be done. Many of the processes run concurrently. 
Um, and then of course it comes to what happens on site. So we've, we've appointed two of the best contractors in the country. Um, one is an earthworks contractor and the other is a main contractor to, do, to build the stop structure. So um, yeah, to, to make sure that, that we reach these timelines is just all the processes that we need to, to put in place and make sure that they run smoothly and ma manage it carefully. The value is in excess of 600 million, but that includes a lot of proprietary equipment that's being fitted out by the tenant. It's not just a logistics building, it's a manufacturing building. And as I've mentioned, um, there's a whole lot of robotics and advanced manufacturing equipment that is being imported from around the world, which will be arriving on site from about the end of September, which will need to be fitted from about November. The Chwane Automotive City Master Plan identified the extension of Tungsten Road as part of the key road infrastructure required to unlock the hub's development. The road will provide access to the proposed logistics hub and inland port, required for the auto industry to be linked to the N4 highway and Transnet's rail line. So Tungsten Road will be one of the processes being built in parallel. Normally you build your roads and your bulk services before and then you build your building. But in this case with the facilitation of the city of Tuane, we've got a section 76 certificate which allows us to build in parallel. So we're going to be putting the bulk services which includes Tungsten Road in while the building is being built. All the bulk services and Tungsten Road will be complete before the building is complete. The Chwane Automotive City is envisioned to emulate well-established automotive cities such as those in Spain, China, Germany and Japan. The hope is that the Roslyn hub will form a second CBD in the northwest of Chwane, close to Kharankua and Shoshanguve, and will be anchored by a labor-intensive automotive manufacturing core that will enable workers to walk to work and which will redress the poor land decisions of the past. The YFPO project is the catalyst for the Roslyn Hub development, which is a crucial step towards the creation of the Tuane Auto City. This is a start of something that, that, that could be great in the city of Tuane in the motor industry. Um, and this motor city this is envisaged here by the city. Um, we we part of this, this one, the, the first in the automotive city, and we are we we proud to be part of it, and I think it's gonna it's gonna have an impact on the community as it is, but hopefully this will grow into something much larger. The Rustland Hub will enable entry-level workers to live within walking distance of work, while the money and time saved on transport can be directly invested in assets such as homes, while also increasing the time available for family and quality of life. That's Cremo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.